Boom. Hey everybody, what's going on? Hope you guys are doing good. I'm doing just great. We'll be an unboxing from Stumac. And yeah, I've already kind of unsealed the tape that's on it. Let's get it opened up. I've got my packing slip here. I already know what that is. And I got some, ooh, let's see here. Pre-cut 24 piece. And these are the 16 inch radius. And I've got I just bag them up. Why can't I open this? Pre-cut 12 inch radius and these are medium highs. I got one, two, oh, there's two of those. And then these are the wide pyramid. I've got two of those. And then these are the wide highs. And these are all 12 inch radius, exception of the first one I showed you. That's it. That's all she wrote. Another box I can add to my recycling bin. Actually, not. I just throw them in the garbage. So here is the new neck, which I probably didn't show it or do anything with it uh, at all as far as an unboxing. It's just a neck. Says Jackson on it. Whoop de do. It's in fairly good shape. The only problem I have with this is I already plucked one fret out, and whoever did, I don't know if you're going to be able to see it, but like right here, there's some glue, uh, there's some glue over here, there's some glue up against the fret over here. Yeah, they did a shitty job. There's some glue over here, and when I plucked the first fret out of it, they really got glue on the binding. I mean, just, you know. It's a decent neck, it's in good shape, there's nothing wrong with it besides a couple of smudge marks on the headstock. The headstock is not, has not cracked, has not broken, has not been glued together, it's all one piece. And this was a bitch to find. So I had to find a neck that would fit the Kelly body that I've got and somebody ended up posting a comment saying that uh, because I ended up having a neck made for the guitar it was considered counterfeit so I ended up like yeah okay whatever. And uh, the old neck was just too short. I needed 24 frets, and the one I had was a 22 fret. So I put my bridge like all the way, you know, more towards the center between the bridge and the holes that were drilled out through the body for the strings and the string ferros. So I needed to get the right one. So I'm not going to move that bridge in order to put a new, a different neck on there. Even though I customized the headstock, I don't care. This one here, I'm not going to customize the headstock at all. If this was damaged in any way, then I would, but it is not. It has the holes drilled out for the tuners, and the tuners are kind of indented. I've already got that taken care of, and it saves me from drilling out new holes, right? So all I have to do with this is just pluck all these frets out, get my 12-inch radius block, sand it down to get rid of all this glue residue. I tried using a little bit of acetone. The acetone did not really work. The glue is not fresh enough uh, for the acetone to remove it and I don't want to start softening up any of the binding or these inlays that are on here. So that's kind of the plan today is to pluck some frets. So you can either watch, you can either not watch, uh, you can take notes if you want. There might be a test at the end of this video, who knows. Alright, so let's start pulling some frets here. What I got is my wood burning kit right here. It's a iron that's for wood burning. It's got an adjustment on there for heat, which works out really, really good because I don't want to overheat the fret and I don't want to burn or do anything with the wood that is on the fretboard itself. And then I got my prying tool for pulling frets. Pretty simple, pretty easy, you know, nothing, not that big of a deal. I kind of wonder why they end up putting a hole over here with threads inside there. I'm kind of wondering why they did that. And I think it's going to be time for me to get a new pair of these because these are starting to wear out and they don't really cut. Unless I can put these on the grinder and just flatten this out a little bit to sharpen it up. So, I don't know. Let's see how that works. They're starting to get a little dull. I've been cutting a lot of frets and, uh, yeah, it's starting to take its toll on it. So, let's get a pluck in over here. Like I said, there was a lot of glue. I got some over here as well. Tried to get it off with the acetone. It doesn't work. So I'm going to have to pluck this by hand, you know, fun stuff, right? I already got a back bow in the neck, and I can see 
looking at not so much this side well there's one here and there's one here and there's one here but I can kind of see that there is a little bit of cracking where some of these frets are and I'm kind of thinking that whoever put these frets in didn't cut the tang wide enough in order for it to uh, you don't feel it too much but there is a little bit of cracking there so what I'm going to end up doing is putting a little CA glue on each one of those cracks before I finish the neck and uh, get those to kind of seal themselves all right that's what you get for buying something used, right? So again, I'm left-handed, so I'm going to have to start using, I have to use this with my left hand. What I, all I want to do is heat these up to kind of loosen up, break up, whatever glue. Again, there's a back bow in the neck that also helps widen the fret space for the tang to loosen it up, make it easier for these guys to come out. And I like this uh, wood burning solder, or wood burning iron is what they call it. It's not really a soldering gun, but although you probably could use it for a soldering gun, it comes with a bunch of different tips for doing different stuff, but it's supposed to be for wood burning only, not for soldering. And I've used it quite a bit on a bunch of different stuff, and it works out pretty good. So I'll just pry up a corner over here a little bit, start on one edge. and then let the tool kind of work its way through the rest of it. Try not to pull a lot of the wood. There's one. And these look like brand new frets that were put on here so it's somebody did a job on this thing. Didn't do a pretty job but they did a job. And uh, what I'm going to do is measure these frets and I'm sure that I purchased the right size for this neck. Actually what I should do is look it up online to see what size these frets are. This way I'll put back what was supposed to be on here. So let's see if this one comes out as easy as the first one did. I could leave this and just do a fret dressing and be done with it make sure that everything is uh, level with each other and but the problem with that is is I don't know what the other person did and why they had to put so much glue all over it and I'm not too crazy about the way the fretboard looks you might not be able to see it on camera too well but in person it just looks like ass and I don't want to, I don't like that so I'm gonna continue to pluck and you guys can watch right now Alright, so that wasn't too painful. I'm going to let the iron dry a little or cool off a little bit. This CA glue or whatever they used is like gummy when it was heating up. As I was pulling the frets, I can see like a, a, a gummy string that was coming off of. Now, I don't have a lot of chip out, but all these this crumbs and shit, that's glue and it's black it's not like clear so if you look at like here on the binding let's see if I get that in the picture look at here on the binding there's that's glue there's glue on the binding over here there's some hair sticking up that's glue not uh, not wood or plastic it's a real shitty job 
So let's see how they did the tangs on this. Now, this has got binding on it, okay? Now I can see why the binding cracked. I don't know if you can see that. That tang that they cut off of there is not much. Then when you look at the other side, they cut more off the other side than they did. So when they put these frets inside of there, and they didn't file the cut to now my nipper tang nipper gets pretty damn close and it works out pretty good to where there, there's nothing there sometimes I'll have to file them a lot of times I don't because it works pretty damn nice and I'm sure as I use it more and as old older it gets it's gonna wear out and I'm gonna have to start filing more but mine's been working pretty good so that's one fret that's really bad as far as that goes Again, it seems like they're not nipping. Like whoever did this did not nip enough off the edges. This one looks all right. See, like this one here. Okay, good example. Barely cut anything off that side, but this side cut a lot and pretty much all of them are like that I mean it just like this one here look at that look at how much tang he cut off of that one you can see it and then this side here is hardly any now when you're doing a fret job and you're plucking frets, you want to go slow. It saves you a lot of trouble of chip out. And don't wipe this down after you end up uh, like taking a rag or your hand and don't wipe it because what's going to happen is if there are any loose pieces of fretboard material, uh, it's going to catch on the cloth, it's going to catch on your hand, and you're going to end up probably pulling out some pretty good chunks. Straighten the neck out, which that's what I'm going to do next after this thing cools off. And I'm going to go just hit it with the sandpaper. I'm not going to hit it with anything else. Luckily on this, what would probably save this fretboard from a lot of chip out was the amount of glue this guy used to put in these frets. That's why I said that I saw some problems here and there on, with this glue. And uh, I want to do it all over again because eventually there's going to be some issues or troubles with this if I didn't yeah I don't know who did this but they did a real shitty job so now I want to measure find one of these frets that I didn't bend up really good and I want to measure the fret match it up with the fret material that I've got and start installing some frets Alright, so I got my straight edge over here, and I want to line this up with the fret slots, and start loosening this thing up here so I can go ahead and straighten this thing out, so I can sand the radius in the neck and clean this fretboard at the same time, get rid of this glue that's on here. All right, so that's loose, and I am still got a little bit of a bow in it. A little bit. All right, so I'm good that way. Good that way. All right, so the neck is back to straight. Put this back in here. Move that up to side because I'm going to need those two again.
double check my radius over here. Yeah, it is a 12 for sure. Yeah. Alright, so I'm using a 180 grit. Make sure that this is nice and flat. There's no pieces of tape or anything on the back of it because that will actually change. If there's anything on the back of your sanding block, your radius sanding block, that is going to actually change as far as putting a divot or a line or mark in the wood itself. And you want to make sure that this is nice and flat as well. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and just Nice and even. See, all over here is good as far as the radius goes, but when it gets down here, the radius is not quite right. So I'm going to have to file that in. Whoever did the radius on this neck might have not have done a decent job. So let's check something out here. I don't want this on millimeter, I want it on inches. What I want to do is I want to measure this heel. Measure this heel right on the binding. So we're looking at a 0.216 on that side. And a 193. Alright, so that's telling me that whoever did this send it on one side more than the other, and that's why I'm getting a little bit over here where it's not uh, sanding but it is sanding over here so I have to make this completely even so the high spot which is on this side I have to even it up the problem with that is is that you can't just sand that one spot you have to go and do the whole you have to do a whole fretboard. You just can't do that one spot. All right, so let's see what I've got now. I'm looking at a 193. Oh, I still have to come down, and then it's showing me here, too, that it still needs to go down. closer
that's looking pretty decent. Let's see what we got over here. Make sure that this is even across over here as well. That looks pretty good. That does not look bad at all. Just this bottom part. much better. I can see the difference really good now. So I still have a little bit over here that needs to come down. If I take my radius gauge, I'll probably see light in the middle. Very little. But I do see a little bit of light then and coming through in the middle over here. And I want to get rid of that. So you can see I'm going back and forth with this, but on the down stroke is where I'm actually cutting forward stroke. That's why there's more dust here than there is over here. And my dot and laser is still centered, so it's like it's not cutting a lot. So I should be able to use my finishing sandpaper to get that to where I want it, which will be 400 grit sandpaper. Now I'm going with 600 grit. See that's all gone over here now, it's nice and flat. And now I'm going to go with 800 grit. Make 
sure this is still smooth. Yep. Nothing got underneath it. Alright, so the 1500 grit that I'm going to be using next is going to be just a polishing and when I mean polishing it's going to be polishing the inlays feels nice now Make sure this is still flat Alright, that's it. Polished up the inlays. Got some of the figuring coming out of the uh, uh, inlay itself. Everything feels nice and even. The one thing I like about this Jackson, Jackson guitars, when you look at them, kind of like if you look at the decks on an Epiphone, you'll see a lot of black filler around the inlays. Jackson does a damn good job at putting in their inlays. And as you can see, the back heel. I don't know if you can see it or not, it's pretty much even on both sides. And so is the top part of the neck as far as where the nut goes. So I gotta get rid of all this shit here, clean up my mess. Now if this was a new neck and it didn't have a finished back, uh, even though I do have some dust and shit on it. If this was not a finished back, all this shit that's on my hands would be all embedded into that wood, and that's not a good thing. So let me get this all this mess cleaned up over here, and now I gotta start cleaning out front slots. All right, so I decided to take a little bit of a break. The neck is pretty much done. All I need to do is really mount it to the body, and that's about it. I already did the uh, cleaning of the fret slots, which that was really, really fun because it looks like they used a um, like a rubber cement to put the frets in to lock them in place. A lot of gummy shit came out of the fret slots. Uh, I had to do a little bit of fret slot sawing to remove it instead of trying to scrape it out like I usually do with the tools that I've got. And uh, yeah, so I decided to take a little bit of a break right now. Let's see what Guitar Fetish did as far as fixing the slight problem that they ended up doing. So this is the first order that I did with Guitar Fetish and these are a kind of a cool little switch thing that uh, doesn't replace your tone. I could replace your tone, but it doesn't replace your tone. And gives you kind of like pedal effects. So I ordered six of these things and sent them an email. They replied back. I ended up uh, just giving them the video that I made of doing the unboxing. So they sent me a new box. So let's see if it did, didn't it right. I'm going to start installing these on the other guitars that I've got. Alright, so there's no packing list or anything. There's supposed to be six of these puppies. Let's see if they sent me the other five. Looks like they did. Oh yeah, they sent me the other ones. Now, I thought there was going to be a um, uh, an output jack switch, a switched output jack, sorry for these and I guess there isn't and when I talked to them they said that uh, they don't supply them with these so I don't know if that's going to be an extra thing I have to buy or if you switch this thing all the way down to the first setting that it actually bypasses or shuts this the circuit off. So 
so yeah, finally got the rest of them. And I want to try one of these out and install it in one of the guitars I'm going to be building and see what happens as far as what it's going to sound like. Alright, so i got to find a spot or a drawer to put those in and another box for the recycling bin. So like I said, the neck is complete and looks a hell of a lot better without all that glue residue that was on here. And I picked off one, there was a spot that was on one of the fret markers and this shit was like rubbery so I don't know if they used like a rubber cement on it but I know it was gummy as fuck trying to get these things out and it ended up uh, working out in the long run not a whole lot of fret uh, fret material that was fret board material that was torn out all new frets measured them out for what I got from what I bought and I had the right ones fret ends have been all dressed all these little cracks that are in the uh, Binding have been CA glued. The back of the neck is, you know, nothing's wrong with this. It. Nice and smooth. I did a little bit of a not polishing on it, but just kind of cleaned up the black residue from, you know, handling it. And headstock is basically, you know, complete and done. And uh, did a little polishing on that. Nothing wrong with it at all. So now it's just time to monitor the body of the guitar, get it all put together, put my tuners in, and yeah, finally get this thing in one piece. So she's wired up, neck is on, she's got strings on it, somewhat in tune. I have no sound. I have nothing at all. What the fuck? So I'm thinking, well, I did buy the EMG set used and maybe I got screwed on that deal. So, went back through my parts. I have another circuit, exactly the same thing as what's inside of here, exactly the same. I figured, okay, right, well, let me check this out. Let me like plug, unplug some stuff, plug some stuff in. Pretty simple, pretty self-explanatory as far as hooking this stuff up. Um, yeah, so what the hell's going on? Well, it wasn't the pickups. It's not the circuit that the pickups are plugged into. It's the Tessa switch, or Tessie switch, whatever you want to call it. So I purchased a few of these switches a while ago, and I've used one of them and another build a long time ago, and I had two more left. It's like, okay, well, I have this one here, which is a smaller version of the one that is installed. This one's more of a gold. This one's more of a rose gold than what this one is. And I want to test this one. So I've got my multimeter. And basically it's on continuity, so if I go ahead and I put these two together, there should be a beep. So if I go ahead and connect this wire and this one, I should have a beep. There should be something beeping. If I push the button, I get a beep. Now, this is supposed to be reversed. This is supposed to be the other way around. I should be having it uh, have sound and push the button and have no sound. Yeah. So, that's useless as far as, you know, what I need it for is guitars because I can't have it that way. This one here is the same way. So, what I ended up doing, flipped the guitar around. Yeah, it's pretty dirty right now pulled out my circuit here. Now this has got three prongs on it. All right. So if I go ahead and connect my meter to the prong that is not connected to anything right here and to the jack or the uh, connector that's supposed to be So now it's working. And then I push the button and it cuts out. So if I connect this to the wire that it's supposed to be, I get nothing. There's no sound whatsoever. So to test this and show you this, you plug in on plug this in now the guitar isn't really set up right now
I have the uh, what is this? AXC set for active. Now, I push the button and I get sound. Nowhere on the package, and I wouldn't have bought it if it said this on the package, that the pushing the button is activating the circuit, releasing the button is disconnecting the circuit. I would never bought them if that's what this was. So now what I have to do is snip these two. Now I'll take you in closer and show you. I didn't touch any of this. So right there is where to switch. There's the extra prong. It's clean. There's no solder on it. Nothing has been moved. Nothing has been changed. So what's the deal here? I gotta snip these and connect it to the right lug. So let me plug in my soldering station. Boy, I got a mess up here. I need to clean up. Turn on my soldering station. This soldering station I got, I like it a lot. It ends up holding, even though I keep it unplugged, it holds whatever your setting is on the dial. So it should get up to 300 and, what was it, 360 degrees? And right about, now, 361 degrees. That's pretty quick for just sort of turning the damn thing on. All right, so I'm going to release the white wire and see if I switch it to the next lug over here, if that's the one that it needs to be switched. If not, it's the center lug. So, clean my soldering gun, or iron. Give me some slack over here so I can have some room to work. And go ahead and melt. And desolder this son of a bitch. That's it. Like I said, if I would have known that that's what the case was, I would have never bought these. I would have left them alone. Alright, so that's still making a connection. This one is disconnected. If I go ahead and hit this prong here, I got nothing. I go to this prong here, and I have sound. So I just have to take this white wire and tack it onto the other side of the circuit. And let me get a little bit of a little bit of solder on here. Without burning any of these other wires, let me tack this on. solder to it because it's pretty pretty bare alright shut my soldering station off unplug it Put this back in here, kind of nice and neat. Flip this around. Move this out of the way. Move this off to the side. Move this over here. Turn this back on. All right, so I am connected. Let me get a distortion tone. Now we can tell a difference. Favorites. Now it's working. Everything's the way it's supposed to be. 
All right, so now that that is straightened out, I won't be buying any Tessie products or Tesla, whatever they call themselves. I won't be buying any of their products again. Not if that's how it's going to be as far as their packaging, not saying what is actually in the package. All right, so I got the guitar hooked up. Get her back to pitch again. Now I got tens on this thing. Alright, that's good. So what I want to do is I'm going to check the relief in the neck first. Get that where I want it. Capo on the first fret. Turn this puppy over. Let's see right about there. Too much. So let's go ahead and get this in some back bow. Loosen this puppy up. strings on the guitar. Let's see where we're at now. I can deal with that because by the time I release the strings some attention off these strings that should put me right where I want it to be should put me right where I want it to be right now I can live with that Let's see what my action height is at the 12th. I go by inches. Ooh, I'm really high. Yep. So I gotta drop the action height down. I need a small jeweler screwdriver. So right now I'm looking at 332s at the 12th fret. I want to see a 564s. Alright. And on the high E side, I'm at 564s. I want to see a 16th. And I am right at sixteenth, right at pretty much a little bit under five sixty fourths. Go ahead and put this back in tune. Yep, that's working. I'm gonna go ahead and get the pickup pipe situated and also see where's that Allen key at? This should be the same Allen key as 
adjustment here. No, these are smaller. That's bigger. Okay. So let's go ahead and lock the bridge in place because I don't need to move that. Yes, this has got a locking bridge. Damn it. This is the Allen key for a tuck, right? Yeah. Where's the Allen key for that? And there you. That's in place. Now let's see what I got for intonation. So I know it's going to have to be changed. It's going to go backwards. Right on where I need it. That one's good, but I want to make sure it's tight. I, I gotta find the right Allen keys for this because the Allen key is slipping, it's not supposed to. Cheap tools that they come with with this shit. Number four. Then go forward just a hair. Right on it. That one can go backward quite a bit. back a little bit more. It's as far as back as I'm going to get it. So next thing will be to adjust the bridge. Nope, don't have to do that. Just gotta go back a little bit.
that's good. That can go back a little bit. You know what? I'm going to do this. So I'll loosen this side. And then loosen this side. Now this is going to throw everything off. And I have to start all over again, which is not a big deal. I want to center that bridge a little bit more than what it was. In this one, I'm doing this the hard way for. Use one that's got a ball on it, it works out better. Give myself a little bit more. The reason why I'm doing this is I'm giving myself more room for setting the intonation. That's what I'm doing here. All right. Put that in place. It's got to go forward a little bit. Probably should have just left it where it was. Perfect. Bring this one back. Gotta go forward a little bit. That can go forward just a hair. Mm -hmm. 
Good. Right on it. That's what I like about these bridges is if you don't have enough room, each side of the post is adjustable and you can move it forward or move it backwards. And if you're just running out of room where the screws are, set screws are over here, to lock the roller bridge, the bridge part in the position, the saddles, um, you can always just move the whole bridge if you're running out of room. And that's what I like about these roller bridges. Alright, that's good. Now the first fret action height is the next thing that I want to take care of and then I'll have to return it again and go through some shit. But now that I know everything's working, which is a big plus, that switch, you know, oh yeah, it's gotta come up. Now until I go down. Now that's just right, this side's gotta go up. So that's to go up. A little bit more. Good. This side, I go up. Go up some more. Just a hair more. Check the base side because when we change the angle on one side, it messes the angle on the other. Yeah.